Okay, uh, this is a story and it's called The Shadow. Once, several years back, I had a breakup with my shadow. It went something like this. I would leave the house and go walking around mid-morning, as was my habit. Trailing not far behind me was him, as always. He never kept as much distance as I would have liked him to. I would go about my daily routine, running errands and dealing with people, and he would slither along and parody me behind the other person's back, mimicking me with a gross display of overacting. Other days, he would follow me into my room, just glaring at me from the wall. We would sit there hours on end, me looking at him, him looking back, until I couldn't stand the sight of him. I'd put out an extra lamp to chase him out, and he'd jump down to the floor and hug my feet, just barely visible next to the side of my shoes. But there was no getting rid of him. Eventually, it got worse. I would take him to parties, and he would pull his usual wallflower routine, just glaring at me from the corner. After obnoxiously mimicking my actions for half the evening, he would gradually break the ice of the other shadows in the room, obviously gossiping and spreading rumors over furtive glances and buffoonish gesturing. It was obvious the bad influence he brought to every gathering, mulling about with clear shallowness. After a particularly bad episode one night at the bar, I knew something had to be done. I went home to lock myself in my room and consider my options. Of course, he followed. I sat there with my head in my hands. He lay there spread halfway between the wall and the ceiling, looking down mockingly. Well, are you happy now? I yelled at him. Not yet, he answered. I hadn't expected this. <laughs> I appraised the situation for a moment and inquired further. So what is it you're after? He bore down on me with that same flat expression he always had. I'm tired of the shallow existence. I want to be in your shoes for a while. I think we should trade places. Now this is intriguing. We continued to talk well into the night. We shared ideas, criticisms, and concerns at length, and eventually we came up with a plan. The two of us set to work, and by the morning, the task was accomplished. By means of a highly dangerous and experimental technique, which will not be revealed in this episode, my shadow and I traded places. When the light of dawn broke through the window, it was a completely new world for me. Before, the sun had only warmed my face. Now it gave me one. There he stood, looking as dumbfounded as one could imagine, unable to grasp what had happened. To my great amusement, the first thing he seemed to realize was his, his, teeth, his feet were touching the floor, and that he could step on it. He reached out and grasped various objects in the room, never having picked up anything before. He still looked gray and empty, but I knew the world would see him as me. We set out to face the morning this way, and it turned out to be a day like no other. He got to play his mind routine in the real world for the first time, and I got, I got to parody him parodying myself. <laughs> By the day's end, both of us determined we liked our new parts, and we would make it a permanent arrangement. So it has remained. Yet I can't help but think, as time wears on, that if I spend the rest of my life standing in my own shadow, I really have no ground left to stand on. Thanks.